Today we're going to learn how to spread mortar for brickwork and how to lay brick to a string line. This is the brick spreading station that will be set up by myself or an upper classman. The brick spreading station consists of block laid at the base and block turned on their side mimicking the foundation of a wall and a brick shelf. It also has two brick leads, three courses high, along with a block backup. For our material, we have a full mortar pan, along with brick beside it. We have a bucket with a hoe, in case we need to temper up or shake up our mortar, our tool bag, and our levels in a block cell. Before we spread any mortar on this project, you're going to need to hang a string line. This is going to be timed. You have one minute to hang a string line using line blocks from lead to lead. At no point can you drop a line block. At no point can you drop the string line. After securing the line blocks to the leads, you have to put a hitch in your string line and let it hang without touching the floor. When I evaluate you for this project, I'm going to give you three chances. If you don't get it in three chances, you're going to have to wait until the next day before I evaluate you again. This is how you'll start off hanging a string line. You'll have your string line on top of the wall along with two line blocks. No hitch in your string line. This is what the process will look like. I'll start a timer and then begin hanging the string line. Start on the lead that is on the left. In general, in the field, we hang a string line from left to right. We pull to the right. As I'm pulling the string line, I'm putting some tension on it. If I put too much tension on the string line, I'm going to pull the brick off of that lead to the left. Don't want to do that. If I don't put enough tension onto the string line, the line is going to have a sag in it. I'm placing a hitch in the ball end. Now I'm placing the line at the appropriate height. The line should be right at the top of the first course of brick on both sides. And there's our timer. If you cannot successfully hang a string line in one minute or less from lead to lead, I'm not going to evaluate you for the brick spreading and brick laying part of this project. You need to learn how to hang a string line quickly and efficiently before laying any brick. Now we're going to learn our brick spreading techniques. Of course, there's many different ways to spread mortar for a brick wall. However, there are a few things that we want to avoid doing, such as dropping mortar all over the floor, smearing the faces of our brickwork. You're going to do whatever works best for you after learning these techniques. It begins with forming a loaf in our pan, just like we did when we spread for block work. We're going to pick up that loaf one step we're going to eliminate is snapping the trowel. We're not going to snap the trowel and set the mortar on the blade. We want that loaf to slide off of the trowel when we spread it on the wall. We have our string line set up at the correct height. We have our mortar in our pan. Some masons prefer their brick mortar to be a little bit looser than their block mortar, and that's fine. As a right-handed mason, I'm going to be spreading the wall from left to right, the entire length of the wall. This is where it gets a little difficult, right at the very beginning. I have a brick here and the brick shelf right here. I want this area to be full of mortar when I start spreading. I form a loaf, I'm going to say a baby loaf of mortar. I'm going to start right at the beginning, plop that down. 
this area here is full. We're gonna come back to that area after we spread the entire length of the wall. Now I can do bigger loafs on the blade. As I'm spreading, we're trying to avoid the string line. We're gonna make pretend that this is a really long wall and that there are multiple masons working on the wall with us. If they're laying brick to the line and our trowel continuously is hitting the line, it's gonna make it very annoying for the other masons working on the wall with us to lay their brick to a moving string line. So we're gonna try not to touch the string line with our trowel and mortar. We'll continue spreading. We spread right to the end. Now we get to a step that we don't do with block work, but we do with brickwork. This is called furrowing. Even just the step of furrowing, there's a couple different techniques. We put the point of our trowel, the top of our trowel, the point, the toe, down just above the brick shelf. I'm putting the heel of the trowel against the back wide, against the back wall. Bringing the trowel down, right here I keep the blade of the trowel away from the string line. I then going to pull the mortar and that separates the mortar. Brings the mortar to the face and it brings the mortar to the back of the brick. That's one way to furrow. You're going to see other masons going up and down with their trowel. That's another way to furrow. You're going to see some masons go side to side with their trowel. This tends to hit the string line and move the string line and shake it and we want to try to avoid that. Ideally, we're just putting the toe of the trowel down, pulling the mortar, moving it to the inside face of the brick and the outside face of the brick. Now we have a good bit of mortar that's overhanging our wall. We're going to scrape that off. The angle of our trowel is important in this step and I'll get a close up in just a bit when we're laying the brick. We angle the trowel away keeping that mortar on our trowel. We can either go back to the pan with this mortar, we're not going to throw it on the floor, or we're going to fill in any low spots, such as right at the beginning, with some mortar. We scrape it completely away, and now we have a nice bed of mortar to lay brick on. There is one more step and that's what's called back cutting. This mortar that's against the back wide, that's against this block work, might hurt us once we start laying brick. We don't want mortar squeezed between the back of the brick and the block work. So I'm going to jam the toe of the trowel down to the brick shelf along the inside of the back wide and just simply remove it from touching the block work. Now we're ready to start laying brick in the wall. We have our brick stocked up face up. That's going to help us when we reach down to grab a brick. We want our thumb on the face of the brick no matter which direction we're going in the wall. I'm going to be going right to left for our first course. Second course, we're going to switch it up and go left to right. Third course, we're going to do whatever. Pick up the brick with our thumb on the face of the brick. We get some mortar on the blade of our trowel towards the toe. We're going to do two swipes on the brick. Now when we laid block, we applied mortar to the block that was already installed in the wall. When we lay brick, we apply mortar to each individual brick before we lay it. 
in the wall. Two swipes on the head of the brick. One, and then the second one down the face. What this does is this clears away any mortar from the face of the brick. When we go to lay the brick to the string line, if there's any mortar protruding out past the face, it's going to get all over the string line and move the string line. Two swipes, one, two. The mortar isn't going to go anywhere if you do this step correctly. If you do this step incorrectly and try to spread the mortar, kind of like block, when we were spreading for block, when we go to the wall, that mortar is going to fall off. And we're going to need to start over. Two swipes. The first one, we're almost smacking the brick. Second, clearing the mortar away from the face, getting it ready to be laid in the wall. This gives us a nice full head joint when we squeeze it against the brick that are already in the wall. When we were laying our block, we were able to identify the top and bottom of the block. There is no top and bottom to the brick, but there is a front and a back. There is a face of the brick, the part that is going to be seen after installation. With this brick, it's easy to tell the difference between the face and the back of the brick. Some brick, it's tough to tell the difference. You'll be able to identify the face of the brick because it will match the heads of the brick, the ends of the brick. That's how you can identify which side of the brick is the face. Now we're ready to lay our first brick. And I wanted to get the camera as close as possible to explain what's going on with this step. There are so many things going on and a lot of them are tough to see. We have our thumb on the face of the brick because that's how we picked it up. We want to avoid having to spin the brick in our hand after we apply the mortar to the head joint. Keep in mind there may be other masons laying to the string line so we want to avoid moving that string line as we lay the brick. Our mortar is on the head joint. We're ready to place the brick. There isn't much finger room behind the brick. That adds a degree of difficulty. We bring the brick down, avoiding the string line. Here's where it gets tough. If you take a close look at my thumb, my thumb is going to start curling up. If I continue down, my thumb is just going to push the string line down. I don't want my thumb to move the string line. So I'm start curling my thumb up while maintaining control of the brick. I'm going to start squeezing that head joint. My thumb is curling up. The brick is laid, but it's not down to the string line. Now we're going to place our hand on top of the brick, avoiding the string line. Now I'm going to set that brick in place. I can add pressure to my fingertips. I can add pressure to the heel of my hand to push this side of the brick down or this side of the brick. Adding pressure to my fingertips, adding pressure to the heel of my hand. The brick is laid to the appropriate height. The top of the brick should be at the top of the string line. The distance away from the string line should be about the thickness of your trowel. That's good for the top of the brick. Now, how about the bottom of the brick? We have mortar that's oozed out right here. I want to be able to see the bottom of this brick and its relationship to the wall underneath. I'm going to scrape away the mortar with a trowel that's sort of clean. I just banged off the excess mortar that was on the trowel. As I cut the mortar away, the blade of the trowel is angled away from the wall. Do not 
cup the trail towards the wall, such as this, and scrape or pull the mortar this way. This is going to smear the face of the brick. We want to avoid smearing the face of the brick after we cut the mortar away. We're going to cut the mortar away, angling the trowel away from the wall and taking notice of the bottom of the brick and the top of this brick shelf. This brick is, we'll say, pretty plumb right now. The bottom is in line with the edge of the brick shelf. Bad, I'll do what it looks like when it's bad. Here we have the top of the brick. Nice and even. Good. The top of the brick looks good with the string line. However, the bottom, we have this lip. Now, this is what's called toed, T-O-E-D. The brick is toed out from the face of our wall. That means the brick is angled back. We want the bottom of the brick flush with the top of the course below. We'll go to the other extreme opposite. And it's going to look like this. The top is pretty close to the string line. The bottom of the brick is really far back. Now we have a ledge right here. This is what's called hacked. The brick is hacked in the wall. This is where we're developing our eyes. We don't use a level anywhere in this project. Your eyes are going to be focusing on the bottom of the brick and its relationship to the brick shelf or the course below, the top of the brick and its relationship to the string line, the thickness or width of a head joint, and when placing the brick, your thumb, trying not to move the string line. There's a lot going on with every individual brick that we lay. One brick that's laid bad in a wall will stick out like a sore thumb. We want every brick laid plumb, level, with a full head joint. Well, now, what's a full head joint? That can lead into another big discussion in general. A full head joint is 80% filled with mortar. We're going to go for 100% every time. Now we're going to continue laying the rest of the course, and I'll try to explain what I'm thinking about as I'm going. Picking up the brick with my thumb on the face. One, two, right to the wall. Trying to avoid the string line. Curling up my thumb. Setting the brick, scrape away the excess mortar. We're ready for the next brick. We can use the mortar on our trowel to help apply the next head joint. One other thing that I'm looking at is our bond. Are my head joints too big or too small? Well, there is Another thing that I'm looking at, sort of like a cheating thing. I'm looking at the bond of the block work below our brickwork. Are the head joints of the brickwork lining up with our block work? Yeah. That gives us a clue as to where we are with our bond on our brickwork. If I was way past the head joints of the block work, I will need to tighten up the head joints to get back on bond. Try to avoid tapping down the brick 
with the trail. You're gonna to need to do this sometimes, and it's usually when your mortar is too stiff. You're gonna place the trowel on top of the brick and have to tap it down into the mortar. Ideally, we're just setting each individual brick with our hand. We get to the last brick. I'm gonna move the camera and we'll get a real close look at what's going on there. We're about to lay the last brick in our course. This is called the closure brick. The last brick that's laid in a course is called the closure brick. When laying the last brick, there is a tendency for the head joints to not be as full as possible. If the building were to leak through the brickwork, it's usually gonna be where the closure brick was laid in a course. We don't want the building leaking, of course. What we're going to do is what's called double butter the closure brick. We apply mortar to the brick that are already laid in the wall. A couple different ways that we can do this. I'm going to show you the standard technique and what I think is a pretty cool idea. We smear, smear. We take our brick and we apply mortar normally, just as we did before, to both head joints. We then place the brick in the wall. Take a close look at what the mortar is doing. I have mortar that is being scraped off of the brick, off of the closure brick, by the two brick that were laid already in the wall. We have this amount of mortar that's coming to the top. This technique is, we'll say, good enough. However, an older bricklayer showed me something so simple and so neat, and I would like to show that to you. He called it the flying wedge. I don't know why he called You know what? I do know why he called it that. His nickname was The Wedge. So we'll go back to the beginning. We have our closure brick that's ready to be laid. What he did when he spread mortar on the brick that were already in the wall, he applied the mortar at an angle. Onto each brick. An angle there and an angle there. The mortar is angled down on the brick that he was about to place in the wall. He took a little extra time and angled the mortar the opposite way. So that when he laid the brick you definitely got a nice full head joint as you place the brick to the string line. Small, simple technique that almost nobody does gives you nice two nice full head joints. Now that we've laid the first course, we're gonna move to our second course. We move up each line block on our lead to the top of the second course. We still spread mortar from left to right as a right-handed mason. Form the loaf, spread on the wall, one thing that's different from the first course to this course is the surface that we're spreading mortar on. We had a solid surface 
on our brick shelf when we spread mortar. Now we have a surface that has holes in it. We're laying what's called cored brick, just like an apple core. There are holes in the brick. That saves material for the manufacturers, allows for a lighter unit, while also keeping the compressive strength of the unit. Our first course we laid right to left. One thing I didn't mention when laying brick, after we spread the wall, it doesn't matter which way we go, we turn our body completely around. Now our working hand, our left hand, as a right-handed mason, our brick hand is now towards the wall the entire time, whether we're going right to left or left to right. Now we're going left to right. It doesn't matter what you do on the first course, you're gonna do the opposite on the second course. We still pick the brick up with our thumb on the face. Instead of applying mortar to this head joint, this side of the brick, we simply spin our wrist and we're going to apply mortar to this head of the brick. Still with two swipes, one, two. The mortar's not going to fall off when we go to the wall with the brick. I'm gonna set the brick just like we did when we laid right to left. I'm looking at the top of the brick and its relationship to the string line. I'm looking at the bottom of the brick. Clear some of the mortar away. Scraper from the top. We have a nice full head joint. We have a nice full bed joint. With this mortar, when laying left to right, there is one extra step that I like to do, and that's apply a small amount of mortar to the brick that I just laid. That's not a full head joint. In bad brickwork, we'll say this is what's called clipping. Clipping the brick. That is a small amount of mortar, not enough for a full head joint. I'm still going to apply mortar to the brick I'm about to lay. Doing this, it's almost like double buttering the brick like we did in the closure, but I know it gives me a nice full joint out to the face of the brick. That's gonna help us in a process later on when we strike up or tool our brickwork. With this course, I don't have the guides like I did with the first course of head joints and where my head joints should be placed in. Am I ahead of bond? Am I behind Bond? What I do have is the cores of the brick. There is a center core, the core of the brick that's right in the middle here. And ideally, that core will be centered on the head joint on the course below. Try to keep your brickwork clean. As a freshman, you're not even gonna be using new brick. You're gonna be using used brick. Still try to keep them clean. Keep your work clean. Trying not to drop too much mortar on the ground. and keep the face of the work clean. I'm getting to the 
close your brick now. And we'll do the flying wedge. Wedge of mortar on the brick. Wedge of mortar on the brick. Two full head joints when I lay the closure brick. That's our second course. We're done, the second course. Now we're gonna move up to our third course. Now we're gonna move our line blocks up to the top course, our third course. I'm going to spread left to right. If you want to work on a different spreading technique, sort of like we did with the block work, where you load up the trowel and dash some mortar off of the edge of the trowel and then spread, you can do that too. Try to avoid hitting the string line or dropping mortar all over the floor, such as I just did. Furrow. That's gonna bring mortar out to the faces. I'm gonna use excess mortar that's coming out past the face to fill in any low spots. Back cut. That's gonna keep mortar from squeezing up against the back Y and pushing our brick out past the face of where we want it to. I'm gonna go right to left, just like we did with the first course. However, I wanna talk about bricklayer etiquette. We're gonna make pretend, you said before, that there are multiple bricklayers laying brick on this wall. Let's pretend that there is a bricklayer behind me and he's laying left to right. Well, that means I'm slowly backing up into him right now. He's getting closer and closer to me and my backside is getting closer and closer to him. He is about to lay these bricks right here. And if I'm in his way, my backside is in his way, it's gonna be very annoying for him. When laying with multiple bricklayers and you're getting close to each other, turn around. Put your trowel hand towards the wall. You can still lay brick this way. It becomes a little more difficult because your working hand, your brick hand, isn't towards the wall anymore. But it leaves room for him coming, or her, him or her. He's laying this way and now I'm out of his way as he's trying to lay his last few bricks for her. You're gonna find that you may be better at one particular direction, laying brick left to right or right to left. As a professional bricklayer, you're going to be proficient laying either direction. Speed is not part of this part of the project. Speed is only part when you're hanging a string line. That's the only thing we're looking at 
in regards to speed. The rest of it, I wanna make sure you're going through the proper motions, that you're set up correctly, you're spreading the mortar correctly, furrowing, grab a, grabbing the brick correctly with your thumb on the face, placing the brick correctly, not coming into contact too much with the string line. We keep the brick away from the string line, the thickness of the trowel, as we talked about earlier. If we start hitting the string line or laying the brick against the string line, it starts to push out our wall line, our string line. If we continue to push out the string line with every brick, we're gonna wind up with a wall with a curve in it. Our leads are built plumb. If our string line is rising up the wall plumb and we're following our string line, not interfering with it, we are going to have a nice plumb and level wall. Now we're going to get to the tooling or striking up process of the wall. Ideally, we have nice full head and bed joints, but sometimes we don't. And we'll talk about why that's important in a minute. The first step, we're gonna get this string line out of our way. When striking up the wall, if we need to apply more mortar to the head joints, especially the top course, and the string line is in the way, the string line will tend to flick the mortar back at your face, and it's annoying. We're just gonna move the line blocks to the top of the wall. Now our string line is out of the way. We're gonna be using our striking iron first. We have nice full head joints here. You know what, I'm gonna clear some out. We're gonna make pretend not so full. I've heard so many times you should wait for the mortar to be what's called thumb print hard. And I've never really understood that. This mortar is super fresh. And I could place my thumb in that bed joint and I can leave a thumbprint there. I can come back in an hour and press this mortar and it'll be thumbprint hard. I can also leave a thumbprint in the mortar. So I never understood what thumbprint hard really means. Anywho, if the mortar is wet, it can have a tendency to smear the wall. Sometimes you can't wait for the mortar to start taking its initial set. If it's the end of the day, and let's say it's 3.20 in the afternoon and you leave at 3.30, you're not coming back in an hour to strike up this wall. You gotta strike it just as it is. Take our striking iron. Ideally, we would just go right down the wall, all the head joints, boom, 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 nice and full. We don't need to apply mortar to our striking iron. However, there are gonna be voids, there are gonna be holes in the brickwork. It's where we take some mortar on our trowel, scrape it away from the side, and we can fill that joint. You wanna avoid having to do this as much as you can. Right now, all of this mortar that we used to set these brick in the bed joints and in the head joints, since the time that we set that brick, that mortar has been setting up. That's gonna help us with the cleanliness of this project, the cleanliness of our brick wall. One of the steps after we strike after we tool the bed joints and head joints, the next step in the process is brushing the work. If our work has a lot of fresh mortar, wet mortar, we're going to smear it on the face of the wall. If our work is full of mortar that is set up, and has already taken its initial hardness, when we brush the wall, it's not going to smear up the wall. 
Well, what's the big deal with that? What we're doing is we're thinking about the next step of the process, which is washing down the wall. If we add more work to the wash down team, it adds time onto the wall. Time is money. When you're an apprentice mason, and you're working in the field, whatever the bricklayer next to you is doing when it comes to the bed joints, you're gonna do whatever they're doing. And what I mean is, if they're using a striking iron for their bed joints, you're gonna use your striking iron for the bed joints. If they're using their sled runner for the bed joints, you're gonna use your sled runner. I prefer using a sled runner for bed joints. Some masons don't even own a sled runner. In your work, you're going to decide for yourself what you think makes the wall look best. For the most part, that's all tooling the wall is, aesthetics. It does add strength to the mortar because we are compressing the mortar. So it does add some strength to the mortar, but it's mostly an aesthetic feature and it fills in any holes and voids that we have in the face of our brickwork. We've struck, we've tooled our work. There is some mortar that is oozing out past the face. Before we brush the wall with a cleaned trowel, I'm gonna scrape away this excess mortar. Now, ideally, this mortar is set up. When we go to brush the wall, we shouldn't be smearing it. However, and this is a tip that was brought to my attention, you would think that if you brush the wall really slow, it would help with the smears with wet mortar. It's actually the complete opposite. Here I'm smearing the face of the brick. If we do a quick brush, it won't smear it as much as if we went slow. Fast with the brush when you have wet mortar. We don't leave it like that. Now we go to the step of polishing. We'll go through our head joints. What this does is this adds a shine to the joint. We want to avoid using just the tip of the striking iron in the head joints. What this does, if you use just the tip, you're going to follow the contours of the edge of the brick. And we're gonna, that's going to give us an unsightly look for the head joint. Try to keep the striking iron flat along the wall. That'll give us a nice straight up and down polished head joint. Now we get to the bed joints. We can go back to our sled runner or we can use our striking iron. You're going to use whatever you think makes the wall look best. There is a tendency when using a striking iron to have a nice smooth joint, but it gets wavy. We're going to nickname that wavy gravy. It's nice and smooth, but it's up and down. The sled runner, you're going to have tendency to get a very straight bed joint but it might look slightly rough either way uh, I'm not gonna say either way is acceptable we definitely don't want wavy gravy nice and straight if it is slightly rough on the inside that's okay as stated earlier 
there are many ways to lay brick in a wall. The end result should be relatively the same. Full head joints, full bed joints, the brick are level, the brick are plumb, there isn't many smears, there isn't much mortar on the face of the brickwork, there isn't mortar all over the ground. There are three parts to this project, and you can't go on to the next part until you successfully complete the part prior. What I mean is the string line. Practice hanging the string line. Be able to do it within a minute. If you don't pass that, you're not able to go on to laying the brick. Then there's the laying the brick part. Make sure you're laying the brick properly, spreading properly, applying mortar to the head joints properly, setting each individual unit properly. If you don't do that successfully, you're not gonna be able to go to the part of tooling your work. Practice each of these three steps before asking me for an evaluation in which I will set the timer for your string line. I will stand behind you while you lay every single brick in the project, making sure you're doing it correctly. You successfully complete those two, I'll let you tool your work and I'll walk away and I'll come back and just check out the end result.